In 2000, we bought an abandoned 100-acre farm in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. We spent years cleaning it up, built a new house, and now are trying to make it a functional homestead farm. Welcome to Red Tool House. Well, hello everybody, welcome back to Red Tool House. Um, today, I just want to kind of hit some updates, get everybody uh, uh, caught up on what's going on, been going on the past couple weeks. It's been a really interesting several weeks, to say the least. We've had sub-zero temperatures uh, down in the negative degrees Fahrenheit. Um, been pretty cold, uh, had a pretty bad cold snap there for about two weeks. Went up to 70 degrees. Uh, for a couple days and back down in uh, in the teens at night and 20s during the day and we got about three or four inches of snow it's been a weird uh, weather uh, situation here recently but it has given me the opportunity i've finally been able to use my snow plow i actually bought a plow for the side by side about 14 months ago and um, the year before the winter before this last one so the winter of 15 16 we got 19 inches of snow in one day and I had a little Honda Foreman 400 and it just wasn't cutting it. It was not uh, able to push all that snow on our driveway and we have a decently steep driveway that we need to keep clear. So uh, I quickly discovered, hey, I need to get rid of that Foreman anyway because of other issues I had. This just sealed the deal. So I got rid of that. Of course, got the side by side and bought, uh, bought a plow and yeah, it was a pretty decent investment to you know, plow the size you need for the side by side. It has to have a winch, has to have all those elements to uh, to use it. But the winter of 1617, we didn't get a snow worth anything. We got just a you know a dusting here or there, so I never got to use it. And you'll actually see with some of this footage that uh, you'll see some dust and cobwebs on it because it uh, it stayed in the garage for an entire year. It uh, never got scratched, so there's not a scratch on it. But I was finally able to use that, which I was excited about. <clears throat> It did pretty well. It's, it's kind of uh, seems like a little overkill at times because I can do the whole driveway in two passes, but I guess that's efficiency. Well, since we're talking side by side, another interesting thing that's happened in the past couple weeks was this. I got the joy of replacing this beauty right here. And um, some of you may recognize this. Some of you may think, what in the world is that? Well, this is the rack and pinion steering for side-by-side -side behind me. This side-by-side -side has 211 hours on it, but it is out of warranty. They have a one-year warranty. But um, what happened is uh, my son was using a side-by-side -side one day, and he's like, Dad, the, the steering seems a little weird. And I said, all right, I'll check it out. So I get out and drive it, and it's like, well, it may be doing something. I'm not quite sure. And then just happened to use it the next morning to do my farm chores, and and realize that yeah there is something weird here it's kind of locking up halfway in the process of a turn it's like it's hitting something and and you got this weird noise and and the shaft was actually kind of felt like it was going over a hump as you're turning the wheel now nah, that can't be good so brought it in the garage and sure enough the uh, the main shaft that goes down into the worm gear uh, was was elevated about that much so it was uh, it was literally coming out the you can see the uh, the gasket is shot, the bearing is shot, you can see the loose, I don't know if you can or not, loose bearing um, um, material there inside the uh, uh, the worm gear. So it was just it was just coming apart. So I was thoroughly disgusted, obviously, to have a, a machine like this that's not that old, not that doesn't have too many hours on it. It's not like I go rough riding with it. I don't I don't do any of that, I just do my farm chores. So needless to say, I was aggravated. So I had to spend, um, obviously at night taking it apart. I had to order it and I had to overnight it because I use a side-by-side -side every day. So I had to overnight the new part and um, came to find out that I'm not the only one that replaces the rack and pinion steerings on these Polarises. Evidently, according to some forums and some third party uh, people on the internet, this happens quite a bit. In fact, the aftermarket companies make a better quality, a heavier duty rack and pinion system. So that's what I bought. I invested into a more, hopefully, a heavier duty rack and pinion that will last longer. So I got to overnight that and of course spend a day putting that on. So um, one of those things, I always feel that the adage of you get what you pay for in that situation, but this was supposed to be one of the better of the side-by-side -side options. I was always a Honda man, and and then everything I'd read said, hey, for a side-by-side, -side, you need to go with Polaris. Well, 
I'm finding out I'm, I'm, I haven't been too impressed with it. Now, I'm not sponsored by Polaris either way, but if they'd like to give me a new one, I'd be more than happy to sing their praises. But as of right now, I ain't singing. <laughs> so, so I'm a little aggravated with that. So um, if you're in the market for a side-by-side, -side, take that in consideration. Um, this is actually the third issue I've had with this machine. Uh, now, this is the first one that would be manufacturing issue. Uh, the, prior to that were um, uh, the local dealer and their assembly. These things come in, obviously disassemble, and they have to put it together. And one thing they neglected to do was tighten down the roll bar. And it took me a while to figure out this thing squeaked like crazy. It sounded like a, sounded like a, <clears throat> an old rusty wagon going down the road. Just squeaked. And, and so I went around and discovered that every nut and bolt on the roll bar, the ROP system, was not tightened down. Wasn't even, you know, some of them were loose and rattling free. So that was an issue. And then I had an overheating issue which it took me a while to diagnose, but this has a coolant system that actually needs to be bled. And from what I can gather, um, there's still air in the coolant system from when they put coolant in it from shipping. They never bled it, so it would overheat because there'd be a huge air bubble in the system and it wouldn't circulate. And I was getting ready to replace a thermostat, I was getting ready to replace the electric fan, all kinds of things, but, uh, but finding out that was the issue. So yeah, a little aggravating. It's been a little aggravated with this machine so far. I uh, hope it uh, straightens up and Hate to have to keep putting aftermarket parts on it. Well, the last thing we're able to do this uh, this week is we we're able to inseminate two of our sows. Now, we actually had a, a breeding session about a month ago, and I bred three of my five sows, and only one of them took. Only Merida was able to take, and so uh, I was ready to breed the other two to, uh, this week. Um, so we'll we'll do a little bit of update of that as well. This pig right here, that is Hoss, and I've never been able to breed her. She's never shown any heat cycle. She has gone crazy right now with a heat cycle. So, I got a dose in her just about five minutes ago. And, like I said, I've had her, she's gone on three. And I've never been able to get, to get a dose in her. Because she's never shown a, a, a solid heat cycle. And then bang all of a sudden she's she's in full-blown heat here so we've been able to uh, get a dose in her and she uh, she did everything she's supposed to i wish i could have filmed it but i'm here by myself and so i didn't want to get my camera equipment wet but you can see the way she's she's roughhousing with everybody else here she's, she's definitely ready to go and, and be bred and so i'm going to give this 12 hours and i'll come back it's now uh is it 4 p.m 5 p.m so I'll come back first thing in the morning and uh, give her another dose. Now, Mercy here, she didn't take last time when I bred her last month, and she's about ready to be in the heat. She's, uh, she's a little ill-tempered right now, but not, not quite there to, to standing. But you can see, she's about ready to go. So uh, she, she lets me put weight on her, which right now she's not. <laughs> But when she lets me put weight on her, then I know she's going to be ready to go. So I think she's uh, she less less than 12 hours away. So uh, we'll check her again tomorrow, hopefully. I don't think I missed it. I don't think she's on the back end of it. But yeah, I'm excited about getting Hoss. I really liked, you can kind of see the reason why I wanted to breed Hoss. Look at the shoulders on that pig. That pig has got some crazy shoulders. And it's a good confirmation everywhere. And she's been a pretty good tempered pig. So I'm hoping that she'll be able to take... We'll see how it goes. And I know, well, what's her face back there? Merida, Merida's pregnant. She's a full month pregnant. She's the only one that took last month. So she's she's pregnant already. But you can see there's a lot of activity going on here. All right, well, just another update we have is been able to get uh, some of our uh, sows bred. Um, last time I bred, I, I was able, uh, last month got Merida here in the back bred. And my game plan was to breed uh, Abigail and Mercy at the same time, and neither of those took. The breeding didn't take. They're in heat again. Actually, uh, Mercy's in heat. Well, this is Hoss, who's never, never really come into heat. And I was able to breed her yesterday. So I got one dose in her, but probably not going to get any more in her because she's, uh, she's become belligerent again. Put another dose in Mercy. And uh, so we'll give that a shot now, if we can. I don't like doing this in the barn in the confined space, but uh, we'll see if we can pull it off. Uh, give me, give me. All right, that's good. That's good. 
All right, so we've got standing heat. And obviously, she's got the tail open there and accepting. So Kelly's going to give me one of the catheters. Now, sometimes um, I've had to use some bore spray. So you can get that from your supplier to help stand, get the stand in. Um, you just spray that, and it tastes terrible. So when you spray it in your mouth and, and you breathe on them to try to get them to stand for you, it's, it's terrible. So uh, you may want to read the instructions to make sure you're using it the right way. All right, so we're going to calf, and we're going to go in a spiral direction. Want to go in an upward angle, so of course we don't want to hit the uh, hit the bladder. If you would like to see a comprehensive video of, of, of artificial insemination, I will post a link to it here. I'm going to take the gloves off, and we're in. So Kelly's going to give me a dose there. Do I have to break it off? <laughs> um, yeah, but I need you to bring it to me. Don't squeeze it, obviously. <laughs> Here we go. So we're going to apply and squeeze. And again, if you've got that threaded catheter locked in there right where it needs to go, you'll actually feel it grip. And you should be able to give a dose very easily. You don't even have to put a lot of pressure on it. And she's, she's really arching her back receiving this. And it makes it tough. She's such a huge pig. So, got that dose full in. Maybe kind of let it sit there and marinate for a second. <laughs> I don't know if that's the proper term. And then we're going to slowly thread. You may get a little bit of spillage on the way out. Not a huge deal. And there we go. So that's two doses that I've been able to get in Mercy. Two doses I've been able to get in her, and I got one dose in Hoss. I'd really like to get a second dose in her, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen. She's, uh, she's definitely done, I believe. She still has plenty of swelling. Not even, not even giving her abortion. Giving her a bore spray dose and uh, no luck there. So, uh, so just another update on the farm. It seems like we always breed when it's super cold and rainy or, or whatever. So I've got one dose left since I wasn't able to get one in Hoss. I can even come down in the morning and see if, if Mercy's still in heat. Then, then I could possibly uh, give her another dose. So we'll see. Hopefully we'll have at least two sows ready to go. Uh, like I said, Meredith's already, uh, already pregnant. She's actually got some pretty good little baby not going on already. And then uh, I think Abigail, I think Abigail may be done. She may be ready to retire because uh, she didn't take last time. She had a horrible litter last year, so we may be done there. Oh, come on. That's who's peeing in the barn, you jerk. Not happening. Tilda acts like she's a new well, that's what's been going on around here in the past couple weeks. I uh, want to give everybody a reminder that we're getting close to the end of our survey window. Uh, so again, we've got a survey out there that's uh, just asking you to 10 quick questions about your homestead, your homesteading goals. And I'm going to share that next month as we get all that data in. But anybody that takes a survey, if they just put their email at the end, then you'll be registered to win a StormTech Parka, really nice heavy coat. Hopefully it won't be 80 degrees by the time we award that, as crazy as this winter's been. Uh, but just take that survey and put your email in the end. I'll put a link to the survey down here in the uh, show description. 
Uh, be sure to check us out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Red Toolhouse Farm. Please give us a thumbs up that just lets everybody else uh, find our channel. Subscribe if you haven't. All right, take care, everybody.